You're listening to The Ocho Man, Behind the Eight Ball, only on Ignotainment. Without further ado, the one, the only, Ocho Man. January 19, 2015, my friends, and the Ocho Man's got another podcast here. You know what I've been uh, thinking for a while here? Let's get the Jimbo back onto the scene here. I uh, he served his suspension enough. Chris, uh, he's paid the price, hasn't he? He's paid the price, Ocho Man. He's definitely paid the price. Yeah, right. Uh, he did write an essay. 250, uh, was it 500? I think it was 500. 500, he wrote it, and... Uh, I kind of liked it. Uh, his grammar was a little off, but, uh, you know, screw it. He's back on the show again. Jimbo, other known as Tonto, welcome back, my friend. Welcome back, Jimbo. Como esta, bitches? That's what I'm talking about. Very happy to be back. Very, very happy to be back. And this, let me say that um, 500 words, you might exaggerate a little. All right, was it uh, 300? This is like the Maxwell Smart. Um Show it. Missed it by that much. Missed it by, was it? Two words. Two words. I'm sorry. Nah, yeah, okay. All right. Whatever it was, uh, we're glad to have you back on board here. Hey, did you catch any of the NFL action over the weekend, babe? Did I? Let me tell you. Painful. Painful if you're a cheesehead. Why was it painful? Painful. I oh. thought it was beautiful. Oh. You were on, on the Seattle bandwagon, are you? Well, I just thought it was act of God. That's all I got to say. Karma, oh. act of God. And we we Karma. knew that Green Bay was going down because the NFL brought them to that level. But God said, you are now back to your realm of the world. That is nothing. You are out of the playoffs, my friend, because you took the Dallas Cowboys down on some bullshit call. So... If I had a chance to talk to God about karma, would 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 it, the same thing happen to the Cowboys the week before? Because they absolutely won not. on a bad call, a I, pass I, interference call, I, and I, is I that got, karma too? I, I just want I'm just asking. Hey, I got to tell you this though, Jim. Just asking. There was eight minutes left in that game. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. I I don't want to get into all that. I I don't want to talk about that today. All right. Okay. I'm yeah, just we're moving forward. You. Act of God in my book, Green Bay loses 28-22. They had this game well under control, and boom! Green Bay goes down the Seattle Seahawks 28-22. to I, You know, Act of God, I, you might be onto something there. I mean, did you see the way this thing went down? I mean, that, that, that might be the only explanation. Oh, i seen it all right, and I had a box of tissues right next to me. I mean, this guy, fourth and in inches? I mean, not one time we're going to try to score there? Well, you know what? That's what happens. And in our other big game here, I could have called this a mile away. Patriots versus the Colts at home, the Patriots. Do they ever lose at home? Tom Brady, he's a proven winner, my friends. He wins this one easily, 45-7. to What a ass-whipping that was, huh? Well, uh, evidently. Uh, according to reports, it's much easier to carry the ball with authority if it's not blown up all the way. I, I, I now, now hold up here. Now, what, what you're saying is that they're, they're bringing up a deflated ball. Okay, all right. They could have used a 15 pound shot put, and they still would have beat them 35 to seven. Okay. Oh no, I'm agreeing with you, but uh, that's that's my point. They're now they're saying they deflated the balls. So uh, oh, I guess oh, Legarrette oh. Blunt, since the ball was deflated. He just caused him to run all up and down the field oh, on them, stutter step on their their noses, and unbelievable. I I seen that too, and they can't take anything away from that running game. Blunt looked like he was uh, the uh, Marshall Lynch. He yeah, was beast mode. I, I mean, he was just running over people there. It was beautiful scene, my friends. I I love the Patriots in that game. And I, you know what? I had Blunt. I had Blunt in my uh, fantasy team this year, too. Can you the, believe that shit? Well, uh, uh, speaking of Blunt, how was Mike Tomlin, Ben Roethlisberger, the Art Rooney fan, how were they feeling watching him run wild? You know what, though? I just don't think that he wanted to play for that team. Well, he wasn't good. Well, Bell obviously became the featured back. I mean, you so, know. You know, he said, screw it. You guys aren't going to give me the ball. I'll go somewhere. I'll just walk off the fucking field. 
He walked off the field, and boom, he finds him, uh, his old Patriots again, and he's reunited with Belichick, and next thing you know, they're using him as the featured back. He's got over 150 yards, couple touchdowns, boom, there it is. Okay, so the question now becomes, though, should they have let him walk or should they just spent, suspended him? You know, basically the guy is a shit teammate, leaves, and now look, these guy's playing for a Super no, no, Bowl no. championship. He's not a shit teammate. He's a competitor that wanted the ball. He wanted the ball like you wanted to be back on the show again, and you had the opportunity because we're giving you a second shot here, Jimbo. That's what it's all about here. But I didn't walk out on you. When I got suspended, I was uh, humbled. I yeah. was uh, I was uh, appreciative well, I of my second shit. opportunities here. Right. I was not. I didn't take my ball and go home. How about that? Well, I would have taken the ball and went home with it. But uh, the Patriots, just to show how smart these guys are, how do you send out a guy 6'8", 330 pounds, Nate Solder, number 77, he reports to the referee and goes, I'm an eligible receiver now. I mean, how does the how the fuck does the re, how the how the hell does the ref hold a straight face and go, you're, you're why? Yes, I'm the eligible receiver now. But, but here's the thing, I agree with you. It seems crazy, but they've been doing this for ten years and nobody seems to understand that they got to keep an eye on these guys when they're well, eligible. You're, you're right about that. They but. have. They've been doing it for. Ten years. I can't even remember the first. It was a linebacker, wasn't six, it? They did it with I had a six, eight, three hundred thirty pounds, and this guy catches a fucking leg of lamb, and he's fifteen, ten, fifteen yards away, and you see him hugging this thing like he just walked out of a buffet with food in his uh, food in his hand. He's just w- rumbling, stumbling, and then he forces him away. Boom! There you go. He he you can't go wrong. He you can't go wrong with that. You get a big guy he like that, around. he's, he's going to take the food and yeah, run with it. You, get, you know, you get a touchdown by a big guy, you get to give a big guy dance. You know what it reminded me of? Remember Varsity Blues and Billy Bob? Oh, it's Billy Bob. Bob remember really, Billy Bob? He was really big, though. Yeah, but remember how he was bumbling, stumbling, and, you know, they were dragging him down? That's what it reminded me of. I, I, a little, little, little Billy Bob reference. He, he was kind of real big, though. I mean, he, he, looked, he looked disgustingly big. Unhealthy. And unhealthy. I don't even know how they got him to shoot that scene. Uh, he, he definitely uh, a young man scene, no doubt. It, it couldn't have been a stunt man. You knew it was that big. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, in other news here, by the way, this is pretty interesting shit here. Okay. What do you got for Robert me? Robert Allenby. Now, kick back and listen to this shit, okay? Oh, yeah, this guy. Robert Allenby, golfer, allegedly kidnapped, beaten, robbed while in Hawaii for Sony Open. LMB was at a wine bar near Waikiki. Now, this is what gets humorous. This is, this is great here. If there's anything humorous about this, it's this one right here. He went to the bathroom, and next thing you know, this is him talking, by the way. He went to the bathroom, and next thing you know, I'm being dumped in a park miles away. Now, that's his words, okay? Now, I want to know. How the fuck you go to the bathroom, you pull out your willy to take a pee-pee, and next thing you know, you're at a park all beat up. Sounds a bit shanky to me, my friend. A little shonky, that is. Shonky, mate. That's Austri. That's Need to put a- another shrimp on the barbie. That's an augie word for something's not right there. Maybe you ran into a real pharaoh. That's another oh, Augie oh, word. Hey, yeah. you're, hey, where are you pulling these out ah, from? I, I just looked up some Augie Oh, words, yeah, uh, getting after it. And uh, it just sounds suspicious here. I think he was out looking for something more than oh. at the wine bar. Because wow. how the hell you go to the bathroom, and then all of a sudden from the bathroom, you're at a park getting dumped, beaten up. It, it, this wouldn't happen to be the type of establishment that has the glory holes in the bathrooms, would it be? Uh, you know what? We can't say anything like that if it's, uh, if it's not for real. Nothing's a fact here. But I'm just saying to you right now, Jimbo... This sounds a little bit sketchy. What do you think on this one, Chris? Well, let's not start sucking each other's dicks quite yet. Well, you've got a point there. Well, I, hey, I'm with uh, producer Chris on this one. I think there's something definitely shady going on in the bathroom there in Waikiki. Waikiki at a wine bar, supposedly. Supposedly. If you go to Waikiki, yeah, you know. who's going to a wine bar in Waikiki? Right. Aren't we drinking Mai Tais? And, you know, and, to each their own. But, I mean, you know, something weird was going on with this guy. You know, whether it's one way or the other, you know, that just doesn't happen. Uh, Chris, I mean, uh, honestly, 
you you're telling me you go to the bathroom and then all I remember is I'm dumped at a park right after he goes to the bathroom. A lot of gray area there. Yeah, yeah. I can't say uh, I've unless, ever had that happen. Unless it's uh what's his name? Uh, oh. George Michaels going to the bathroom. We heard of what happened with that guy one time, didn't he? No, oh, I, I think him and well, boy George both. Uh, yeah, it's a whole different realm right there. I don't know about Allenby. I don't know. I mean, you know, the guy's obviously good. Yeah, yeah. Sport, yeah we, but, you know, we can't do know. that. Yeah. We can't do that, Jimbo. There's not enough proof. Not that any... there's anything wrong with that. Well, it says allegedly, so we're just playing with it on that note. I mean, n- nothing's been proven. We'll take his word that uh, someone uh, hit him with a club and got him out of the bathroom and took him to a what? park and beat the hell out of him there, Well, we like, to make, we like to set odds on this show. What's the odds there's more to this story coming uh, out in the next seven uh, to ten days? Well, you know, give me uh, give me a couple days, and I'll uh, give you uh, the line on this one. But I'm going to go. I, no matter what the line is, I'm going to go ahead and say there's there's there'll be more coming out on this one. Uh, you might be. You might be right on this one, buddy. UFC. UFC note here. UFC is fine. John Jones, 25K for testing positive for cocaine. Now, check this out. December 4th. (laughs) And they call this code of conduct. He voluntarily checks himself into a rehab all after the fight on the big fight, and that was January 3rd. Classic. Now, how the hell does the UFC now come out and they suspend this guy, or not suspend, I'm sorry, not suspend. They find this guy 25K. By the way, what the hell is 25K to John Jones after that pay-per-view fight? That's a slap on the wrist, my friend. I think it's Dana White just trying to say, we've got everything under control here. Or do you? You really do have everything under control? I don't think you do, pal. And the best part is, so the guy, you know, of course, it just in the same Robert Allenby type thing, okay, after the fight. How the fuck comes, are you calling this? Well, hang on. Okay. Same thing. Comes out. Says he's gonna, you know, checking himself into rehab. Mm-hmm. He checks out one day later. The more to the, st- I mean, come on, it's just like that. There's, there's, one day, yeah, one, one day. day. Woo, I'm better. Woo, I feel great. Oh, that, oh. that did wonders. Woo, boy, I don't need coke anymore. I don't need a coke because I could sure use some of that crack. Yeah, uh, yeah we're gonna downgrade it a little bit to crack. Yeah, yeah. but uh, that's what we got there. And uh, just so Dana White looks good for his U- UFC, he says. Uh, we well, find him 25k. I'm not buying it. Uh, it's no big deal to me. I think. By the way, if you've seen that fight, which I did, Cormier, he looked like he was beating the shit out of him. And every time uh, John Jones got into a problem, he held him. So uh, I wouldn't mind seeing that rematch again. Maybe Jones being clean, and uh, we may see a different fight. Got to. They got to stop all that pushing on each other. Uh, you know. You yeah, know. That was kind of yeah. my first. You know. You guys were nice enough to invite me over. That was my first foray into the whole thing. Really enjoyed the beginning, but when when he yeah. when he realized that this guy was coming after him, all that lean in and all that, they they, oh, they, they ought to not be I, able to I, do I, that. You know what? And, and here's another thing too. That's great. That, you're bringing up something that's been on my mind too. Stop looking like it's some sort of a gay scene on the ground there. Come yes. On. I, yes. I mean, get a, get 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 some get the ref back in here. Get get them separated again and let them go at let it. Them come I, around, hey, get off the top and boom, uh, boom. There, there, there you go. go. They're, 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 all they're doing is uh, having sexual intercourse on the bottom. Get, get them up, get them up, stand them up and let them uh, go absolutely. at it. Absolutely, I think so. You know what? When UFC first started, it was great, and I'll tell you why. Because you always had like. A tail of tape. You had one guy that was a karate guy taking on a boxing guy. You were, and they didn't look at any weight or anything. One, th- I'm telling you, no bullshit. I don't know if you ever caught the first fights they had, but they had this like 400 pound Kamala looking black guy, and this little skinny little twerp guy. He was like five six or something, skinny guy. See, now I'd like to see that. And they fought. They fought. This was part of the UFC. And by the end of the night, there were like eight fighters or ten fighters. They all hooked up. And at the end of the night, they had one one big match. So they kept going back and forth. They, they fought all night. That's what UFC was all about. Yeah. But now it's becoming more of a w, uh, WWE or whatever that wrestling stuff is, you yeah. know? Hey, do you remember Hoist Gracie? Yes. How great was Hoist Gracie, man? That guy could beat anybody. I, yeah. I, I got to tell you this, though. I was never, 
on his side, though. Yeah. I, I was I was always the guy that I wasn't a Hoist Gracie fan like Jimbo isn't because we don't want to see that guy laying on the ground yeah. hoping. And, and that's what that guy was. He, he was, was a badass. Though. Oh, he was a badass, and he wanted you to go after him while he was on the ground. So I see what you're saying there, but I was the kind of guy like a Tank Abbott. If you guys remember Tank Abbott. He was a big guy that just said, come on, let's just fucking fight. Let's that's do what it. I like right there. That's, that's, yeah, that was the beauty of yes. it. So, you know, we got that. UFC is finding him 25G. I don't think it's a big deal finding him 25000 and then they call it code of conduct of the UFC. Yeah. I, it's getting a little bit of a joke. I, I Again, I just can't wait for that big fight coming up here and boxing between Pacquiao and Mayweather. This is going to be a great one, my friends. I'm really pumped up about that one. You don't think it's uh, too too little too late? No, no, no. I, you I, think it's I so still, good? I still think pound for pound, they're the number one and number two fighters in that division. So, But, uh, not, but, but wouldn't have been a better fight three, four years ago? Okay, but you know what? I, I still think they're active. You're still seeing... You're going to see a good fight, okay? Don't fucking ruin it here, Jimbo. No, I'm asking a question. I'm asking the question. Right, everybody's I, I'm, buying I'm, I'm buying it. I'm buying it. I'm buying it. If right. you're buying it, I'm buying it. Well, you can't have two guys buying it. I think no, I'm buying. You're buying it. I'm coming over to your house then. Oh, you mean buying, buying. I thought we were just buying the <laughs> no, whole no. idea. Okay. No, I'll, buy it. I'll let you buy it. There right, we go. Yeah, yeah, right, you right, I'll, buy I'll buy it. it. I like, it. I'll I like it. it. For what you pay me to do this show, you're buying it. Okay. Sure. okay. Great. All right. Uh, NBA news. God, the New York Knicks suck. <laughs> the New York Knicks just absolutely suck. This and, is terrible. Oh, they are. They are. I, my, my Sixers are even playing better than the Knicks. And... uh they asked Spike Lee, their number one fan, by the way. They asked him, uh, when asked, are you going to London to watch the Knicks play against the Milwaukee Bucks? His words, we've lost 16 motherfucking games in a row, 26 out of 27, and I'm going to, I'm going to get on a plane for that? I can't take a cap to see them play, much less a damn plane. They're terrible. I mean, how could they even ask the guy that? You know, that's crazy. And he is their biggest fan. Oh, the guy's been oh. through so much. And uh, you know what? Uh, just one time for him, I'd like to see the Knicks do something. But the, 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 I tell you. Toxic. Spike, but Spike's got the wrong team. Spike's got the wrong team. He's got to jump on board. I'm telling you right now, I, I like Chicago this year. I, I think oh. Chicago can do a lot of damage in that. Uh, and uh, another team that I've really – I've been on this team, Jimbo, since day one this year from last year, and that is Memphis Grizzlies. I Ooh, love the Memphis yeah. Grizzlies, and they're going off the board right now. Now, last week they were going off at 18-1 to 1 to win the championship. The world champions, I'm wow. telling you, eighteen to one. They're already leading the West. I think they're up, uh, up by one or two games, or if not that, they're tied up. The, I, you just can't go wrong with a number like that, eighteen to one. So they're not a sexy team. Who gives a shit? They play good. They play solid. They play together. And when you got that type of chemistry, like George Allen once said, "All forty men do their job." There's no way we can lose. And I hate George Allen because I'm a cowboy and that was a redskin coach but um moving on here. moving on yeah moving on no they're terrible but uh, you're right you know what i like though about the, about the nba we're seeing new blood golden state hey. oklahoma city memphis i love it no yeah and it's here's not the a, same old well, team here's here's the thing that gets to me though it's really big it's not a one team domination like it yeah. used to be in the yeah, NBA. Yeah. The NBA used to be ruled by uh, the Bulls, by the Lakers, by Boston, and uh, possibly, yeah, Miami. But now you're seeing a mixture of every team is involved here. Any team can beat you any given day, except for the fucking Knicks. And uh, now my Sixers have come around too. They're they're playing good ball. I'm telling you right now. There is a lot of variety in this NBA right now, and it's a good mixture. Good I the, welcome it. Yeah, good for the. It's good for the sport. It's good for the fan base. Good for the sport. Now those big cities, you know, obviously I'd say the Cleveland people are a little underwhelmed. I mean, they were probably expecting more. Uh, you know, obviously New York is hurting. Chicago, as well as they're doing, they'd like to feel a little more confident about Derrick Rose. Mm -hmm. if, I, if you're a Laker fan, you got to be wondering what is going on here. 
Yeah, the the Lakers definitely. I mean, you're a high profile team. You have to get your shit together over there. And uh, management, I don't think, has went out and brought in the big time players. You need to support Kobe. And here's the thing: I don't think a lot of these big timers like playing with Kobe. Well, no, I mean, why would you? He ran Shaq off. He's run. I mean, he's running my off. I, every time I see the guy, though, he's doing something good. I mean, he's always a team player. How do you know? You didn't play with him. I see him. I see him on the god, goddamn TV. They always show him. But he looks good. He doesn't play with his cock and balls like the rest of them. He's you always. Don't, you don't know what he does in private. Oh, I, well, I don't know. But he had that hot chick in Colorado. Now, why don't you too. call Dwight Howard and ask him why he's not in L.A.? Dwight Howard is not a team player. No, man. I, you know, it's fine. But my, it's okay. So the thing is, who are you going to bring in there? Um, what what high profile free agent were you going to bring? I'm, I mean, I'm telling you who I'm bringing. I'm Mac, bringing Max Scherzer, the pitcher for Detroit. Broke my heart. Who has signed a seven year, one hundred eighty million dollar contract? Can you give me something that's worth a hundred eighty million there, Chris? I one hundred eighty million. He doesn't have anything worth one hundred eighty million for Christ's no, sake. No, he's got a sound effect somewhere. There's that oh, cha-ching. Jesus Christ! Oh, one, one more. He can do this for an hour. Yeah, that's true. One hundred eighty million with Washington Nationals. Oh, he don't pay that. Now, now this is according to Ken Rosenthal, which comes from a real reliable yeah, source, yeah. Fox Baseball, and uh, that's twenty four million and some change. Which, by the way, I can live off that some change. That's a lot of cash, my friends. A lot of cash. Did wow. I did I see somewhere where it could possibly be worth two hundred million with incentives? You're kidding. No, Which, I thought why, I saw. Why, that. Why, why the fuck did I say? Are you kidding? Well, I can't believe the one eighty, and you're telling me to. Yeah, I can believe that. Why the hell can't I believe that? You shut your mouth when you're talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> I love I, Max that, Scherzer. Yeah, yeah. God, I just wanted him on the Cardinals so bad. You're not paying anything in St. Louis for something like that. I know. That's just Saint, not their way. St. Louis does not work like that. But they got a pretty good thing going. You've got, in in baseball, what what teams do you think are dynasty right now? That you think I'm telling you right now that New England Patriots, there is no other team. Not even close. You're yeah, right. and, yeah. And I, I'm a big Cowboy fan, I'm telling you. But there is no way you can – there is no team in football history. I, I'm i going to tell you right now, there's not one team that's as close to the New England Patriots. Think about the day Drew Bledsoe went down on the sidelines. Remember that? A blessing. You know what? And and so what's – but here's the thing, and this is what's the most impressive thing about the about the Patriots. They haven't done this with, like, this huge core group for the last nine years. There's only been three constants there. Okay, it starts with the owner. It comes down to Billy Boy, Billichuk, and Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 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 other pieces have moved around. They've done all this kind of stuff, but they're the definition of kind of like you you know you're saying that the Cardinals aren't going to pay a pitcher or whatever. Can't argue with their success. They're not going to pay these high profile receivers, running backs. They look at it like we're going to put the big boys up front and we'll get some guys to play in our system right. because we got Tom Brady. And they always find the guys. They always find the guys. Now, I'm back to the Patriots again, but I'm telling you, it's it's such a story that you can't avoid. No, it's because just, yeah. you, you got you got a team that always picks up another team's reject, kind of like a like an old fading star, and and they just they just say this is the way we do it here. Will you be a part of it? If the guy says yes, I mean, next thing you know, look, look at I, I, I hate to bring up Blunt again, but yeah. but here's a guy that played for the Patriots, went away to the Steelers. Steelers, uh, you would have thought after the Steeler thing, you would have said, I don't want this guy on my team. Yeah. The Patriots said, come on back. He comes back, and my God, he's playing out of his mind. And I know they had Ocho Cinco. Chad Ocho said, but you know what? They said it's not going to work. They did when they had they had Randy Moss the first time, did real well. When Beautiful. Things, that's right. Randy Moss that's did right. great. That's right. And then and then all of a sudden he was trending down a little bit. Guess what? We're not going to hang on him. You're out. They brought him back again, and it wasn't working out. See, they don't mess around. And, and when these players leave, 
it's amazing they don't talk bad about the Patriots. Isn't that amazing? You would think, e- even yeah, after well, they get, uh, even when they get the slip, the yellow slip, they still give a big thumbs up to the New, New England Patriots, and uh, they just—it's it, unbelievable. They—they they do everything right there. And uh, like I was saying, though, you're looking at, you're looking at. Uh, I, I believe this is a true dynasty no, that right. could only be compared to by the New York Yankees. The oh, New yeah, York you're right. Yankees, I mean, uh, this is just some of the World Series here. They, I think they won in 32, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, uh, not 40, 41, 43, 47, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53. I mean, that's a fucking dynasty, yeah, man. And no. the, the only team in professional sports that I can, I can compare that up with is probably getting to be, if New England wins this time, I'm going to say they are equivalent to the old New York Yankees. I mean, this is, uh, are, are we going on, what, 15 years, right? Basically, they've been. Yeah. They've been. And how many years, how many times have we said, oh, this is it. Brady's, Brady's oh, yeah. old. Brady's old. Brady's old. Well, he not can't even do Brady's it. old. It's like God. You look at you. You watch a game, and right. boy, the, you know what they love to do. And this is a, they love to get some little spunky white guy and stick him out there and say, "Catch him." Yeah. Yeah. Stop I, him. Yeah. And can't do it. Yeah, I, I totally agree, man. Whatever Belichick does over there, he turns. Uh, he turns a big time player into a blue collar, humble player, and they work good together. It's a great team. Hey, how many? Here's another thing. How many teams out there, okay, could lose an up and coming star like Aaron Hernandez and not miss a beat? No, there, there's no question. I mean, I, name there's any. No I mean, this guy. I mean, this guy was a good. I player. I don't even remember him now. He, he was a good player. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, and you would have thought that was their demise. I mean, you know, when they when him and Gronkowski were on each on the opposite sides, it was like, God, how do you stop these guys? They lose this guy off. There you go. He's hurt, or he's done. Gronkowski's hurt. Oh, they lost Welker. That, and, and where are they at? Yeah. Championship game. Championship game again. You know. Well, after the game last night, I went out to the porch. I was kicking back. I had a cigar. I had my scotch out there, just reflecting on the two games. I gotta tell you this. This is gonna sound crazy, but it was nice. It was like fifty-five yeah, degrees for January. Right? What a yeah, nice it, night, no, yeah. That's a, I guess that's that melting. Uh, what is it's it? It's a uh, what um, the fuck are they calling that? Where um, bears are uh, global warming. Global warming. Yeah, the global bears warm. are the polar bear. Yeah, the polar bear. He come, the polar bear comes yeah. up from the down from the well, south. No, 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 that's not it. They they they're losing their ice. Yes, they can't walk on ice anymore. Right. Yeah. Uh, so you know it, it's rough on them, but. I tell you what, it was really nice weather last night. I kicked back outside. You're not going to believe this shit. I'm, I got to tell you this. This is going to sound crazy, but I swear I seen something just fly above my head like a star or something. I thought, I, you know what, it probably a shooting star. But I said, man, if that was an alien ship, how sweet would it be for them to pick my ass up and take me on a little voyage? Why would they want to take you? I could, I could really invent shit up there. I Why could, would they I, want you? I, I'm telling you right now, I could invent shit up there, like football, baseball. I can make a, I can make a lot of stuff happen uh, with those one eye bastards up there. They got nothing going on. How they probably you? their sports are probably boring up there. I would introduce them to all our games down here. How do you know they've got one eye? Maybe they got four. Yeah, yeah that's true. Well, you know, interestingly enough, for you to say that, the Air Force released some files. What are you talking about? 130 pages of declassified UFO documents were released today. Those pricks. Yeah. And, you know, you know. interestingly enough, the big event that supposedly happened in 47 in Roswell, New Mexico, nowhere to be found on here. What we got here is they released a whole bunch of, I saw a green light across the sky moving in a weird pattern, and then it was gone. That's what we got. How did you do that with your voice? Yeah, like that, that did that sound good? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah you sound like I'm working. I've been, well, robot. I've been off. You know, I've been suspended, so I've been working on my game, so to speak. Uh, uh, Chris, uh, the suspension might have done him some good, huh? Yeah, I think it's all around been I, upside for everybody here. I, I mean, you know what, He's though, back, though. I mean, man, he's back, back strong. i, I got to tell you, Jimbo, it wasn't really me that suspended yeah. you. Oh. It was Chris. Uh, he said get rid of him. I didn't want to have to Chris, what did I do to you? Air. 
but you know, well, sometimes he's, you just got to put your foot he, down. He's you know? my henchman. You got to put the best know? product you can on the air. Yeah, and, he and, said, and in all reality, there was a strategy behind it the whole time. I thought, see, he'll have. A we would make you hungry. hungry. Yeah, exactly. So, so hence the voice. Starve a hence wolf. Hence the voices, right? Starve a wolf for a week. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, anyway, the, the 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 thing here is, and what I find interesting is, you know, they're releasing documents from as way back as 1947, and basically what they're saying is, is that, well, well, we've had quite a few people say they've seen things. We don't have any evidence suggesting there's any thing going on yeah, they, they don't believe that there's any well UFOs? that's what they say and i mean i gotta be honest with you i mean i'm sure i'm the knowing the two intellects in the room that i'm with I, i'm probably the only one but i mean i don't believe in it do are you? you kidding you fuck yeah why, why there's so many galaxies out there where man. are they then i mean i've been on this earth for 45 years i gotta tell you this where are they why the fuck would they come here all the shit happening now just the other day or yesterday you'd seen another beheading I don't need that shit. If I'm an alien, I'm looking down going, hey, Bob, you think uh, you, we really want to go to this shit? I mean, look at these fuckers. They, they kill each other left and right. So, so you, your opinion is they, they're, they've been here or they're here, oh, and, I, and, they, they, this is, and they don't want anything to do with like, this. Look, I, I really think that they got a couple scouts down here that are reporting, hey, man, they, 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 no, no, no. St- keep the mothership up there. N- not ready for that. These fucking people are crazy, man. So you got the men in black thing going. You think they're m- meandering around the, m- among us? I I, I got to tell you, that why wouldn't you think that? I mean, uh, the, you're observing as an alien. You, you look at the Middle East. All they're doing is killing each other. You look at uh, Europe. Uh, they're starving now. You, you look at Africa; they're killing each other. I, you, I mean, man, this whole place is going down in hell, man. And uh, why would an alien say, "Oh, do I really want to come here? D- d- is this what we want?" No, I don't, now, I don't well, know what they want. Now, Chris, what the fuck are you playing at? Are you th- making them like I'm nuts or something? I'm well, telling it's a you, Twilight Zone, right? Yeah, but I'm just saying to you right now that there's, there's. There's aliens out there that are looking in and saying, "Man, we we just don't want it. We just don't want it." It was cool when it was c- very cool when Jimi Hendrix was around. We were getting into the shit then. Everyone was uh, the hippies. Everyone was looking cool. Uh, you had Joe Namath with his fur jacket throwing. That's that's when the aliens were up and around, they hanging like, out a little more. Yes, and now it's like, "Fuck this. We're not going down there. They're crazy. They're absolutely insane down there." So you're, so you're of the belief that yes, there that uh, there's yeah. just a few here and keeping couple, an eye on us, and, and they don't like what they and say. And I'm telling you what, a couple more scotches I would have had last night, I probably would have made contact with those little pricks. Do you think you've been? I mean, have, have they? I mean, do you feel like maybe they've checked you out? Well, I think they have, and uh, they probably like what they've seen. Uh, they probably want to use me for breeding up there. Breeding. Breeding. I, I've, How do you, I've stated okay. before that I would probably be like a stud, like, like a bull up there. If they took me up there, I would be screwing every little green thing that they threw my way. How do you know that's how they do it? Maybe they multiply through masturbation. I don't. I don't know about all that, Jim. Well, now Chris is laughing his ass off. What, what the fuck does that mean? I mean, master. What? what you, you, well, you can only go so er- far by, by masturbating. Well, you've got this erotic trip planned up to one of the spaceships oh, to have sex erotic. with all these aliens. It would be definitely erotic. I'm telling you that right now. What do you? How do you think it goes down? If I it mean, was multiplication by masturbation, man, there'd be millions of those little motherfuckers running around. Oh, there, there, there. I how mean, do you, okay, so how do you envision this going down? Well, right not like you do, watching late night Cinemax on no, that. Uh, I'm saying, what if that was the case? Your plans would be ruined. No, I, I think they would use me as some sort of a, uh, you know, like a god figure. Oh. From, uh, I would tell them, I'd bullshit and say I represent Earth. I, they're, I'm the king of Earth, and uh, hopefully they buy into it. But that's what we got on that one. What do you think on that? That Well, uh, I you lost me at you're the king of Earth. All right, whatever, whatever. You Not lost me at king of Earth. Well, if uh, my Not friends the out there... The king of Earth needs to give out some give out some locks. Well, how about that? Everybody's I got, I got, I got as two. hot as you are right now. Everybody's waiting on the next lock. Take a bow. 
Coach, take All a bow. All right, I'll bow. That's my bow. i am uh, got my scotch up in the air here. I got my two plays for tonight, one NHL and one in NBA, my friends. We like. Can I get a drum roll here, Chris? I mean, give it to him, Chris. Uh, thanks. I like his drum oh, roll. Well, it sounds like the opening to Panama. Oh, okay, okay. He's shaking my scotch here. All right, we've got St. Louis Blues tonight against Colorado. St. Louis is at home, and I've been riding their bandwagon for a couple weeks now, and I like them tonight. They're minus 220, so what? St. Louis Blues win tonight. And on the on the other end here, on the over 5.5, forget about it. I see this one being a 5-2 to two or 5-3 to three game. Ooh. St. Louis Blues. Blowing the over out of the water. I like it. You're right, uh, I like St. Louis here. They're, and they're firing right now on all cylinders. Yeah, they, yeah. they are, buddy. They got everything going their way. I like St. Louis tonight. Uh, Chris gave me a great uh, kickback on St. Louis a couple weeks ago. He said, I really like them. And I said, you know what? Uh, I, I think I'm I'm down with you on this one. And we, we gave it out. And they just blew the over and under off the map on that one. And we're going to... F- we're going to ride them again today, tonight actually. St. Louis over five and a half at a five to two or five to three. Our next one is NBA action, L.A. Lakers versus the Phoenix Suns. Now, this spread right now is minus ten and a half. I see this being really lopsided here. I'm looking at this one being 115 to 89, 92 type of game here. I look for uh, Phoenix to win this one and win this one decisively. Now, the 212, I'm not too sure about on the over on that one, but if I was to play, I'd, I'd play a little bit on the over on that one, 212, but I don't know if the Lakers can score over 100 here. I'm looking at Phoenix with a big win here. Like I said, I'm looking at this one being possibly a 113 the 90 game, so, something in that line there for my friends. Uh, you're, you're seeing a blowout by Phoenix Suns. Yeah, the Lakers are done. Lakers just are not playing good ball. And uh, what else we got going, guys? Anything well, else tonight? I got uh, confirmation here. The Scherzer deal is actually $210 million. Oh, $210 million. I'm and sorry. $30 million average. $30 million average. For a pitcher every five days. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of moolah. Wow. That's a lot, and you know what? It, it, go, it goes to show you. In my days, I used to wear my Pete Rose jersey, and I mean, you had loyalty among the fans, the players. They all uh, worked good together. Now, you know what? Here's a poor Detroit kid that's uh, saying, uh, "We lost Matt Jersey. I don't know what to do with this jersey anymore." Well, sorry, kid. Oh, money talks, bullshit walks, and uh, the guy. Uh, he knows he's not going to be around the next eight, nine years. Get get your money while it's here. I uh, just I, that is just crazy. It's crazy, but that's what it's all about. Teams are paying this type of money, and why wouldn't you take it? I think Charles Barkley once said, the, uh, "said it the best." I am not your role model here, my friends. I let your mom and dad be your role model. I'm here for the goddamn money. That's right. Going to work. Yeah, that's what it's here all work. about. All right, my friends, I think we've had a great show. Uh, uh, Chris, would you like to give uh, our little sponsors a shout-out? Yeah, the first thing you need to do on the iTunes store under under the podcast, you need to leave a review, a rating. You know, if you have any input or some questions or comments. Leave us a there. review. Yeah, you can find the Ocho Man on Facebook at Ocho Man. Just uh, search in the, the Facebook search bar for Ocho Man. And, uh, you know, send us an email. At Ocho Man at OchoMan dot com. I'm telling you, my friends, uh, our show needs you. Give us a review, give us a comment, subscribe to this Ocho Man behind the eight ball. You can't go wrong with it. We've got other great shows on this Igno whatever. Yeah, if you go to the Ignotainment Media Network, yeah, we uh, got Ignotainment dot com. You can find all of our great shows, everything from the Whiskey Philosopher to Youth Baseball Talk. To uh, a great show for Halo players. So uh, I tell you what, and Jim, yes, Jimbo runs the what? What's that show that he's doing? Yeah, I'd like to give a shout out here for Jim. His show is Youth Baseball Talk with Jim Cromer. He has yeah, 
Well, you want to discuss it for a minute, Jim? Give a little... Um, yeah, give a shout-out there, Jim. shout-out to your own show. Oh. Since we screwed you <laughs> and suspended you, what the hell? Give a little shout-out. No, Make it short, though, because I, I don't want to hear about your show. Yeah, I, No, it's it's, a, it's great. I, it's just uh, it's something I, I, I like to do. I, I, I like baseball a lot, and obviously my kids are involved. And, um, you know, uh, inspired by the Ocho man here, how he's brought his stuff to podcast, I thought, you know what? Uh, I'm going to try to get some information out to people because they seem to want it of uh, maybe some of the better stuff that's going on. I think youth sports in general, I think, get a bad rap. And, um, you know, I thought for baseball, I, I see a lot of a lot of bad stuff going on out there and blessed to, to know some people that are trying to make a difference. And I just thought, you know, it'd be worth it. But it's done real well, and I'm happy, and I appreciate you guys bringing it up. And, yeah, a little uh, shout out yeah, to little Jimbo's shout out, little shout show out. there. Yeah, All right, show. my friends from uh, Jimbo and Chris, Ocho Man, we will see you next time on Ocho Man Behind the 8-Ball. Ocho Man is out of here. And it ain't over now. Because when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Who's with me? Let's go! Come on! You're listening to The Ocho Man, Behind the 8-Ball, only on Ignotainment.